Tune into Nice Radio every Saturday at 7:30 a.m. for A View from the Outside, hosted by Brayton Horn. A View from the Outside takes a look at key issues affecting St. Vincent and the Grenadines and gives a global perspective on how these issues are viewed. Host Brayton Horn will examine a variety of topics to enlighten, stimulate debate, and explore solutions. Hear the facts, hear the real life stories, hear a view from the outside. Join Brayton Horn at 7:30 a.m. every Saturday on Nice Radio for a view from the outside. On a view from the outside this week, this week being the 25th of July, 2020, we look at Breaking Point, B-R-E-A-K-I-N-G-P-O-I-N-T, Breaking Point, with the view being that the country and the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines are at breaking point, and that the time has come to wrestle the country back from the clutches of those responsible for the state of affairs which exists in the country. The Cambridge Dictionary defines breaking point as the stage at which a person, company, system, etc. loses control over a situation and can no longer deal with their problems. And the Collins Dictionary states that if something or someone has reached breaking point, they have so many problems or difficulties that they can no longer cope with them. Those definitions tell us that breaking point is the stage at which control is lost due to many problems or difficulties. Breaking point can be reached by a person, a country, a system, an organization, or a company. The definitions tell us that when breaking point is reached, there are a multitude of problems or difficulties which a country or people experience and can no longer cope. It is with those definitions in mind, as well as being cognizant of a speech delivered by the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, when he delivered the Mandela Lecture online last Saturday, 18th of July 2020, why we, on a view from the outside, say that St. Vincent and the Grenadines and its people are at breaking point. Guterres in his speech highlighted global problems and the fact that breaking point is reached. It is in a similar vein that we, on a view from the outside, look at the circumstances as they exist in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. In doing so, we will highlight reasons why we agree, as is asserted by many, that St. Vincent and the Grenadines, many of its institutions and its people are at breaking point. One such reason is the civil service in the country. Many have said that because of too much political interference, the civil service is at breaking point. Many have said that too many civil servants are now just mere puppets of the members of the regime and that many civil servants operate in a climate of constant fear. Many have said that political interference in the civil service and the overreach in the different facets of government has left many, both inside and outside of the service, frustrated. With service delivery being affected because many decisions are seemingly made for political reasons rather than for the benefit of the country and in accordance with the rules of the civil service code. Such political interference has caused many civil servants not to be promoted on merit. Such political interference has shown that the rules of the civil service are often violated, something which the court is in agreement with when it ruled that many civil servants were unfairly treated by not being duly promoted. Such political interference has caused the civil service to be at breaking point. The National Insurance Service, the NIS of the country, is also believed to suffer from political interference. The institution 
which is supposed to ensure the pension of workers, is believed to be at breaking point. Everyone would remember when the regime withdrew millions of dollars of NIS contributions from workers and did not pay over those contributions to the NIS as they are legally obliged to do. They illegally withheld those contributions and ended up owing the NIS millions of dollars. Everyone will remember that the regime had to borrow money from the NIS to pay back the NIS. Many are also concerned that the regime dips into the NIS fund to build a hotel for which there are no guarantees that such funds will ever be retrieved. Many are concerned that such political interference has left the institution vulnerable and at breaking point. The prison service is also at breaking point. There have been reports that prisoners are using cell phones and smoking cannabis with regularity and with complete disregard for authority. Everyone knows about prisoners escaping, including those accused of serious crimes such as murder. There have been reports of shortage of staff on a regular basis. There have been reports of totally unsanitary and deplorable conditions which exist in the prison. The prison service is at breaking point. Many have long said that healthcare in the country is at breaking point and such lamentations are heard every day up and down the country. Basic medication and supply are in constant short supply. People, and especially the poor and vulnerable, are unable to afford the exorbitant cost of basic medication. Many have no choice but to depend on relatives and friends in the Vincentian diaspora to help them out. The main hospital in Kingstown, the capital, is mold infested and in disrepair. The clinics all over the country are in constant dilapidation and disrepair, with some being wood lice infected, and many of them lack the basic necessities. It is clear with that kind of evidence that the health service in the country is at breaking point. The country is at breaking point because of the many promises and failed projects of the regime. These include but are not limited to the failed cross-country road, of which there was a beginning and an end, but no middle. The failed tunnel at Cane Garden, the failed National Stadium, the failed city at Arnes Vale, a project which is now being touted again, now that another election is nigh. There is also the failed geothermal project, a project of which grandiose boasts were made that electricity will be cheaper and that electricity will be exported to Barbados. There is no such electricity from the geothermal project, none to date. These projects and many more have left the country and its people at breaking point. The country and its people are at breaking point because of the allegations of corruption leveled at various individuals in the upper echelons of the administration in the country and at the administration itself. So much so that the country has attracted notoriety and international headlines such as St. Vincent and the Grenadines is notorious for money laundering. Allegations of the possession of enormous unexplained wealth allegations of money laundering. In this regard, one must always remember when attempts were made to deposit one million US dollars in cash in the Accountant General's account, the account of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, a deed for which there has never been any explanation or any sanctions whatsoever. The country and its people are at breaking point because of the allegations of corruption 
and of election thievery. The country and its people are at breaking point because the election petitions to determine the legitimacy of the government are still languishing in the courts. The country and its people are at breaking point because of the lack of accountability by the regime. Lack of accountability for the spending of Petro-Carib money. Lack of accountability for the cost of the construction of Argyle International Airport. Lack of accountability in many other facets of government. The country and its people are at breaking point because of the levels of unemployment which exist in the country and the seeming inability of the regime to effectively remedy such situation. Despite the current thrust of the regime to blame COVID-19, it must be remembered that such rates of unemployment existed prior to the existence of the COVID-19 pandemic. Youth unemployment is nearing 50%. This effectively means that one out of every two young people is unemployed. The young people in the country are at breaking point. Many are fed up of the seeming hopelessness and despair. Many are calling out to be rescued from a regime which believes they are only worth a drink of rum and a piece of barbecued chicken or some other barbecued meat at irregular intervals. The youths of the country are at breaking point. The country and its people are at breaking point because of the level of poverty which exists in the country. People are pauperized, some say deliberately, and their independence sapped away from them. Many in St. Vincent and the Grenadines simply exist rather than live. The country and its people are at breaking point. The country and its people are at breaking point because of the undermining of the rule of law and justice in the country. They are at breaking point because the opposition has been denied the opportunity from bringing a private member's motion and prevented from bringing a motion of no confidence against the regime. A regime which the opposition and many people assert has failed miserably on many different levels. People are at breaking point because opposition parliamentarians have been physically thrown out of parliament and thrown down the steps with one parliamentarian having suffered long-term serious injury. They are at breaking point because crime is out of control in the country. They are at breaking point because they see that drugs meant to be evidence in a criminal trial in the custody and control of the police go missing without a trace and without any feasible explanation whatsoever. The country and its people are at breaking point because of lawsuits and threats of lawsuits by the head of the regime in an effort, many say, to oppress citizens into submission and servitude and to try to snuff out the medium for opposition voices in the country. The country and people are at breaking point because of the regime's refusal to honor court orders to compensate citizens whom they have wronged. People are at breaking point because of the regime's lodging of frivolous and vexatious appeals when the court rules against it, they lodge these appeals seemingly in their effort to delay the process. People are at breaking point because the regime remarkably, according to the Eastern Caribbean Court of Appeal, uses the constitution of the country as a sword to trample on the rights of the citizens of the country. The country and its people are at breaking point because domestic violence and abuse against women and girls are rampant. People are at breaking point because too often women are killed in the process. People are at breaking point because of the high levels of rape and sexual assaults in the country.
The country and its people are at breaking point because of the one manism and dictatorship and the glaring evidence of the attempt to institute a dynasty in the country where the leader of the regime is bent on passing on rulership of the country to his son. The country and people are at breaking point because of the many insults and disparaging remarks from members of the regime, which are dished out to those at home and in the Vincentian diaspora. The people are told in the most disparaging manner that they are indigent and poor, working in New York as dog walkers and babysitters, living in cockroach infested basements and living hand to mouth. People are fed up of that and they are at breaking point. The country and its people are at breaking point because of the practice of the regime to unleash its agents and enablers on the airwaves and on social media to disparage, denigrate and spew bile at the citizens and anyone who they perceive is not towing their line. The country and its people are at breaking point because of the rampant and wanton victimization which is meted out to anyone who is perceived not to support the regime. The evidence of such evident everywhere up and down the country. The country and its people are at breaking point because of the bribery tactics in the form of lumber, cement and galvanize, which they see employed every five years at election time. They are at breaking point because the regime has maintained the same modus operandi or the same MO every five years. Vincentians, there is much more which we can cite. However, time does not permit us to do so. Therefore, we here on a view from the outside encourage you to add the examples that we have mentioned to the many which you already know about and use them as the impetus that you need to take action. While the country is at breaking point, while the people are at breaking point, things do not have to remain that way. You have the power to change them. We all have the power to change them. Face the challenges head on at a time when the spirit of the people generally is at breaking point, when there are many souls wailing up and down the country. We encourage you to take decisive action in this election cycle to free the country from the clutches of the regime and from complete collapse. And as you do that, as we all do that, let us be motivated by the words of the late American motivational writer, David J. Schwartz, who said, hesitation only magnifies the fear. Take action promptly, be decisive. Vincentians, being at breaking point, puts the onus on all of us to be decisive and save St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Until next week, Randy and all of the listeners, this is Britton Horn with a view from the outside, with a reminder to send your feedback as usual to a view from the outside at hotmail.com. We also invite you to visit and like our Facebook page at a view from the outside, and also visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel at JMB Horn. Have a pleasant Saturday, Randy, you and all the listeners. Have a wonderful Sunday and a productive week ahead with everyone taking action and being decisive in our effort to rescue St. Vincent and the Grenadines and all of its people from breaking point. All the best to you, Randy, and all the listeners.